some kind of a competition between the three religions. Soon we will be visiting one of the most interesting and symbolic, most, the most interesting sites because uh, in terms of biblical events, in this area we, I can say that this is the most important place uh, uh, where we can mention the most important event which is the establishment of the church in Jerusalem. We are at Mount Zion. But what does it mean, Mount Zion? In the Old Testament, when you read Zion, it refers always to the temple. Where the temple used to exist in Jerusalem. So Zion equals Jerusalem and equals the temple. After the destruction of the temple in the year 70, and uh, when Peter and Paul and the other apostles started preaching, <coughs> spreading the gospel, we had now a new church, new teachings that will be heard by the Judeo Christian community. And the Judeo Christians who were initially living at the place of the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples. This place is called the upper room or the synagogue. So the upper room was the place where Jesus had his last supper with the disciples. When he said that I long waited to have this meal with you and they shared the bread and wine together and he said this is my body and this is my blood and uh, during this meal he announced that that day he will be delivered by the traitor who was sitting among us and he said no way I'll come on the boy, yeah, Peter, even you, you will deny me today three times before the Jerusalem cross. So, the last supper took place at the Amor Road. And only after the last supper took place, they went to the field of Gethsemane. When we visited the church two days ago, and when we lived the way of the cross, so the last sub took place at the upper room, which is called the Sinaculum. So from the archaeological point of view, we can have a debate whether this is the place or not. It's not the concern. This should not be our concern. Because what, this, what matters is the events that took place at Mount Zion, whether it's here or at 20 meters away from here, or at the, the church of Santa Mark in the old city, where well, there's a strong tradition about the place being the place where the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples. So, apart from the washing of the feet, the last supper, the Holy Spirit descending upon the disciples, the election of uh, Matthias, the replacement of Judah, the several appearances of Jesus when Thomas, Thomas was absent and when Thomas was there. So many, many events took place at the upper room. And for us, this is the place where we receive the Holy Spirit. The upper room is really the place where the disciples were not frightened anymore spread the gospel. This is what matters the most. It took place at Mount Zion during the at the period when they were all frightened because the temple was destroyed. Uh, Jesus uh, 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 was crucified. Uh, the disciples were so frightened but something happened to them. They were the strongest possible people. They used to speak in different languages, all languages of the world. And uh, 
from this place That's why it's called Mount Zion, the place, the Zion of the temple that doesn't exist anymore. Because now we have a new, if I can call it, movement called the Jewish Christians who will be interested not in the temple anymore, but in the place where the Holy Spirit is in the The reason why it's called Mount Zion. And around Mount Zion, we had a very famous Byzantine church called the Church of St. Mary of Zion, or Hagia Zion, built around the area. Destroyed in the year 614 by the Persians. And uh, the Crusaders rebuilt the building that you see over the ruins of the first century building, commemorating the upper room. But when the Crusaders were kicked out of the country because of the wars, look what happened. The Franciscans took the place as the headquarters in Jerusalem. But we have a problem. What was the problem? When the Crusaders built the building in the 12th century, they built it with two floors. One beneath us contained a grave <coughs> cenotaph or a sanctuary for unknown martyrs. Jews who used to live in Jerusalem, they said, well, this is the tomb of David. It's not an unknown one. Because the, when, when Matthias was elected at the upper room, Peter said in his speech, and here is David among us. So they managed to convince everybody that Peter was talking of David, because David was buried. That's why the Crusaders built the building with the sanctuary of David. Although in the Old Testament we know that David is buried in the city of David, <coughs> the Ophel. Ophel means the martyr. So in the 13th century we have a problem about who will manage the place, the Jews or the Christians. That problem will last for centuries until the year 1538, when the Jewish community and the Christian community will try to ask for judgment from the Muslim ruler. So, everybody started telling the story that then this Muslim Ottoman ruler who built the walls of Jerusalem gave his verdict. He said, well, we as Muslims, we also believe in a Nabi Dahud. Prophet David. So none of you will control the place. We will turn it into a mosque. <laughs> and this place will be turned into a mosque since 1538 up to the year 1917. It will be called the Mosque of David. <laughs> mosque Dahud. Masjid Dahud. So when the Turks were defeated, and you know what happened with this area. It remained for some time under the English mandate, but we had clashes in this area between Arabs, Jews, and English. And then we have the 1948 war, nobody came here. Until 1967, it's normal that Israel takes control of all the uh, neighborhoods of Jerusalem. But when coming to this place, Israel had the control of it. So now we have a problem between the Vatican and the Franciscans about the ownership of this place. The Vatican is asking Israel to recover what was belonging to the Franciscans. The Israeli government said, with pleasure, if you give us Kepernah. <laughs> Negotiations. So for the time being, nobody can uh, say a mass inside, except the Pope when he comes. He, when he came, he wasn't allowed to give him a mass inside that building. Other than this, we are not officially allowed to sing here. So when we arrived, I was surprised to hear people singing. I said, well, I hope that the guardian 
more. Sometimes we had some other guardians who are so excited when they hear someone singing. Stop, 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 blah, 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 blah. And you may come here and you see all the Orthodox Jews playing with their guitars and singing inside. You say, this is our place. This is the example I gave you about the, the race of religions. This will be our place. But we should not. It's an event that we can So, finally, I will show you something that the Muslims forgot to, to skip or to destroy, which is a Christian lintel, Christian symbol, which is a lintel that represents pelicans opening their mouths to give their children to eat. It's a Christian symbol, Eucharistic symbol. So the Muslims used that stone to build the preaching place when the religious Muslim man stands and preach. And I will show you the, the prayer spot towards uh, Saudi Arabia for now. So all what belongs to a mosque is found inside. Based on Christian architecture, which is the Muslim uh, stuff. So it's not easy to surround something very special. Now we have an example of the spots. So let me show you some of the things inside that go down.